If there's anything I learned from board gaming, it's that the most military sound country on earth is Australia. If you hold Australia, you can win and dominate the entire world. Or at least that's what Rix tells you, right? Get into Australia, control Australia, get those extra armies, come out of Australia, take Asia, take Africa, take Europe, take the Americas, and you, you are now the champion of all. Risk the game that has destroyed many friendships. Well, don't let those friendships be destroyed, but it is fun to conquer and destroy things, right? I, I, would, I would give you this. Risk is a good game, but there are better ones. You don't believe me? Okay, folks, so here I am. I'm going to tell you about 10 games that I think are good alternatives to Risk. Even if you like Risk or you dislike it, whatever that may be, these are 10 games to check out. What's interesting is the first three games I'm going to talk about have Risk in the title. But you'll see. First one is Risk Legacy. Now, Risk Legacy takes Risk and stands it on its head. It's Risk in the future, and each person has a faction, and you're going around, and the rules are very similar to Risk, although they're a little bit shorter, and they make the games end more quickly. But after each game, and sometimes in the middle of a game, things will happen. You will write on the board. You will rip a card up. You will open a secret package and add more cards or other secret things, which I can't tell you about. This game actually has spoilers like movies do. And each game is going to play differently and more unique. And as the game goes by, it's going to evolve into a very customized copy of a game that is unlike no other copy of Risk Legacy. It is very unusual, started a whole genre, Risk Legacy. Then we have Risk um, Europe. Now Risk Europe is not just Risk in Europe. Risk Europe is a game in which players have multiple pieces. It's not just all the same pieces and they're playing cards to take actions and get victory points and walk around and they have special abilities that they can use to stop others. It's kind of like Risk, but with extra cool things added to it. I highly recommend it. And then Risk Star Wars. Now, Star Wars is something that a lot of people really enjoy. And this takes the Return of the Jedi, the end of it, when Luke and Vader are fighting on a Death Star and the Rebel troops are on the moon trying to take out the shield generator and all the TIE fighters are fighting X-Wings out there as they're trying to blow up the Death Star. The goal of this game is for the Rebels to blow up the Death Star and you are trying to figure out which battle of those three different things going on you're going to, to work on and play cards and roll dice at. The game very barely represents risk at all, but lets you recreate that battle in a really entertaining way. So those are the games that have risk. Now one of the things you like about risk, maybe you play risk with cubes, but a lot of people play risk with little plastic soldiers. And who doesn't like playing with little plastic soldiers? A game that blows risk away and also uses little plastic soldiers is Memoir 44. Memoir 44 takes all the battles of World War II and puts them in a box where you have these little uh, infantry, tanks, and artillery units, and you move and roll dice and attack. But it does so in a very strategic card and dice method where the cards you play will show you which units on the map you can move, and you're strategically going and recreating many of the famous battles of World War II. Highly recommend it. Maybe you like Risk, but they think it takes too long. I think we can all agree that some games of Risk can seem to last for eternity. Well, a much shorter, faster version is the Age of War. I mean, really fast. It's just cards, and you're rolling dice trying to capture a card, and then your opponent might roll some dice and capture it back. It takes the whole idea of Risk and distills it into a very small dice game. Maybe you like conquering stuff. I can't blame you for that. Who hasn't wanted to rule the world? Well, not everyone. Just me and some other people, but if you do like that feeling, Small World's a good one. This is a game in which the world is too small and each person's gonna control fantasy races like uh, skeletons and orcs and they all have special abilities and you move out, but the problem is your armies are gonna get weak pretty quickly. So you might say, ah, I'm putting this army into decline and I'm gonna build a new race now. They're gonna go conquer, trying to get the most points. Kemet is a game in which you are in ancient mythological Egypt and you have these armies and you're marching around with giant sphinxes and snakes and elephants and fighting each other. It's one, it's one of my favorite games I've ever played. You can get technologies that give you special things no one else has in the game. It's a gorgeous production. It's a lot more involved than Risk, but it's not overly complex. And one thing I do like about this game is any player that you're playing with, you can get to them without 
having to fight other players. There's always a way to attack everyone at the table, which is really entertaining. Maybe Game of Thrones. It's a very hot property right now. People like watching a TV show, reading the books. Game of Thrones, the board game, allows you to take control of one of the houses and maybe like House Lannister or House Stark or what have you, and you're going to move around using diplomacy and backstabbing and sometimes just straight up combat to fight each other, forge alliances, and keep an eye out on those wildlings trying to get over the wall every once in a while. Maybe you like a historical game, okay? Risk is... I don't know where risk is. It happens in the future, in the past, what have you. But there are some games that take different battles. Now, there's a lot of war games out there, but they're a very simple one that's easy to play if you've played Risk, would be 1775 Rebellion. In this game, you have little cubes that represent your troops, and in fact, this is one of a whole series of games. And you remove those troops around, rolling dice and fighting each other, but putting more, you know, you're continually putting more troops on the board and fighting. It's a simple game, but does a good job at portraying the American Revolution. There's one for the War of 1812, one for the French and Indian War, a Vikings one just came out. These games are great, they're simple, they're easy, and I think they're a great replacement for Risk. And then one game, and I hesitate putting this one on the list because it's a lot more complex than Risk and isn't necessarily a war, it's the Cold War. Maybe you like in Risk how you can control the world. In Twilight Struggle, it's a two-player game in which one person is playing the communist Russian, the other person is playing uh, the United States of America, and you are fighting battles all over the place and trying to control different battleground regions all over the world to put out your... You know, the, the, the goodness of freedom against the evils of communism or the goodness of communism or what have you. The, you are trying to control by playing cards that sometimes help your opponent. It's a deep, involved game, but it really gives me that whole world conquering feeling to a degree in a two-player game. These are different alternatives that I have to playing Risk. There are many, many more that I recommend you check out once you fall into the rabbit hole, folks, of how many games are like Risk. There's just so much goodness there. But these are 10 games that I would play first. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.